when filmmakers choose to return to Sundance. William Aldroyd's connection to Sundance began in 2013 when his short film Bask won the short film competition at the Sundance Film Festival London. He has been back and just uh, two years ago he had Macbeth here. But this year, Aldroyd brings Eileen an imaginative and forceful adaptation to the screen with brilliant glue. So please welcome William Aldroyd, director of Eileen. Uh, good evening. Uh, welcome to Eileen. Um, on behalf of um, uh, the cast and crew of Aline, it gives me great pleasure to um, see you all here and to say thank you to Sundance for, um, for having us. Um, I should also say that I, I'm very grateful to uh, Fifth Season, to Likely Story and to Film 4 for guiding us all the way through this, to giving us great support and taking a risk on this film. Uh, I'm very grateful to you and I know that all the cast and crew are too. Um, in fact, uh, all the actors are here tonight, some of the uh, crew are also in the audience, and um, if you want to stick around afterwards, we will be happy to answer any questions here on the stage. Uh, and so without further ado, uh, sit back and enjoy Eileen. Well, first and foremost, congratulations to you all. Yeah. <laughs> we'll start with an easy one. Why don't you tell me a little bit about the genesis of the project and what spoke to you about the project and how each of you got involved? Ooh, um, well, um, I read Otessa's great book and um, you know, straight away it sort of. Um, sorry, I'm just a little bit in shock. The... So fair, so fair. <laughs> I've never seen the movie on such a big screen. It's so huge. It's, um, yeah, it was. Uh, yeah, it was. Um, I'm just so uh, proud of these guys. Yeah. Really, I think. Um, <laughs> congratulations. <laughs> um, also, we have some other people in the audience here who made the film. If you made the film. Will you stand up and maybe people can give you a round of applause? There's Olga, Anouk, Judy, Anthony, everyone up. Yeah, so I read the book and I thought it was a great book and uh, we spoke on Zoom, didn't we, at the beginning of like 2020 or something and um, you've been thinking about making it as a film for a little while and um, you know, I just thought that these characters were great. I thought that the tone was exactly the sort of thing that I love, these sort of um, dark, strangely funny, weird um, stories. And um, so, you know, let me set about trying to um, adapt it. I mean, I, you know, maybe you could you want to say a bit about how that happened? Please. So we talked and we agreed on some really crucial things. We agreed that we were making a movie that wasn't going to pretend like it wasn't a movie. Mm. And um, I'm just kind of remembering that now, that sort of oath that we knew what we were getting into after watching it. I'm also kind of reeling. Um, we shared a vision and then Luke and I went and wrote a script and we got so lucky. Yes. <laughs> And that's how it happened. And tell me, Thomas and Marin, these, these performances are incredible. But first, what spoke to you about the material and, and what sort of sparked your interest in participating? Um, I think I was very, well, I was already a fan of Atessa because I'd read her book, My Year of Rest and Relaxation, Fabulous. which I loved. And then the, the script came through and I immediately read Eileen, which I also love, and I'm currently reading another one of Atessa's books, mm -hmm. um, Death in Her Hands, which I'm also loving. So 
big fan. Um, so that was like the first pull, and I watched Lady Macbeth by Will. Mm. And I was like, oh my god, this guy is very talented, very talented <laughs> team. Um, Will and I also talked on Zoom, um, all happening during the pandemic, mm. and then I auditioned in my grandma's old fur coat because um, I just felt like it. I don't know, it made sense, and then obviously it did make sense, because we ended up in the film. Um, and yeah, it kind of went from there. Um, anybody else blown away by how Thomason actually talks? <laughs> um, I'm really honored to be in this cast. I just wanted to begin by saying that I'm really proud to be in this movie, and thank you everyone very, very much. Um, I wanted to work with Will after I saw Lady Macbeth. I mm. thought it was an extraordinary work, a uh, work in which I saw um, complex... Uh, sometimes you say words and you don't know if you're going to regret it afterwards, so if this has turned into an annoying headline, I'm really sorry. <laughs> um, I saw a study of female complication yep. that hit me really, really deep. And I felt like Will was a filmmaker that could be trusted to tell complicated stories, especially about females. Mm -hmm. And that meant a great deal to me because um, I just remembered one of the very first questions I ever got asked when I started acting, which meant, you know, and had to do press was, are you a good girl or a bad girl? I was 16. And my 16-year-old self wanted to respond with this film. Um. <laughs> And so though I did not know that when I read the script, <laughs> I think a part of me hoped for this exact moment. Yeah, wow. Um, I was a huge fan of every single person standing here. <laughs> yeah. um, I uh, was um, scared to death uh, about this. When I read the book, uh, when I got to uh, Mrs. Polt's thing, I uh, had to take a break from reading the book. I was like, yeah, well, I'll just take a time out. So um, when this came my way, I was like, that part? Uh, I was not sure that was a good idea for my mental health. Um, uh, and then uh, I talked to Will. Mm. And I had seen his work, and I was a huge fan of Otessa's, and it felt honestly like I could not try, um, but I didn't really know what would happen to me. And um, we rehearsed a little bit and all that, so it, it ended up being a, one of the most beautiful experiences I ever had, but honestly, I, I, couldn't, I couldn't say no. It was too scary. I couldn't say no. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, it's incredible material, obviously, and you've really done a lot with it, yeah? Um, that just to reiterate what everyone's been saying, it's Will, it's Otessa's novel, and this too, I mean, I was, uh, you know, you're looking for a challenge, you're looking for mm -hmm. something that, that scares you, and you don't know when you first read it, how are you going to pull it off, and um, so, um, I, I loved these women, I'm, I'm, I'm in awe at what I just saw, and I've seen it twice, and it, it's rich and it's everything you want in the film, but I, I think these women should be applauded for what I, I saw. The question is, what's the best advice you got when you started out in the film industry? We didn't get any advice when we started out in the film industry. No, I'm just kidding. I mean, obviously, uh, we had a lot of uh, guides, but I think that um, taking risks, you know, going for what's scary. I think this yeah. film is, you know, watching it alone or watching it with my screenwriting partner, or, you know, is very different than watching it with 1,200 people. And yes. I'm shocked. Um, I'm processing it. But, uh, like, leaning into the trauma that is shared, that is generational, and the loneliness and the struggles um, in terms of, you know, wellness, mental health, mm. loneliness, pain, uh, generations, like I said, of trauma and abuse, I think are things that we have to look at. So leaning into the films that scare us, I think is 
something that we believe in and we all share a common mind and everyone here on stage obviously felt compelled. So that would be the advice I think to, to go for what's scary and what's meaningful. Beautifully said. It's a very Sundance sort of principle. Yes, risk. Questions for Otessa. That your writing is very cinematic. Do you see yourself as a director in the future? Yes. <laughs> you heard it here first. Fantastic. Anyone else? Yeah, right here. Uh, where are you? I can't see. Yeah, hello. Um, I, it's a relief to be able to work with accents because I love my accent. I'm a very, very proud New Zealander. But um, I find it pretty distracting myself when I, when I listen back and I'm like, oh, God, I sound like that. Okay. Um, so it, it helps me to kind of, um, well, obviously it helps me to get into the character when mm -hmm. I have like really exciting accents to work with, like the Boston accent, or I've done Cornish and American and RP. I, I don't know, it's such, a, it's such a fun challenge. It kind of helps me to move past feeling quite so self-conscious of myself mm. and to c kind of focus in more on the character. Um, and I love accents because usually when I'm filming, I just use the accent the entire time throughout the shoot. So it, it kind of mm. helps to really become invested in the, in the world that we're living in. And it's also really fun at the end of a job when I finally break out my Kiwi <laughs> accent and the crew are like, <laughs> what is this? Yeah, um, great question. Any you. questions about the preparation process and how you rehearse? Well, we were lucky we had some rehearsal, not, not all, all, always the case. Um, yep. I think it's important because even if you don't, do nothing else, it's great to just work out what each thought means. Mm. Because I think, for me, especially with these guys, what I'm watching on screen is... Um, Sorry, I've got my back to you, sorry. It is, it is a sort of, um, is the thought process in action, if you like, especially when, mm -hmm. we've been asked this question actually a lot about when there's a first person uh, narrative, you know, um, Eileen's point of view in the book, how do we get that across without using voiceover? And yeah. I think that what, what Thomasin is able to do, the transmission of thought is so clear for me that, that that can only come about if the thoughts are clear in the first place. Otherwise, what you end up is with this, this generalized emotion, which is what we don't want, obviously, you know. Not that you ever did that, but... So I think that, for me, with the rehearsal process, was about establishing what each of those thoughts were. I think we spent some good time doing that. Um, and it was very enjoyable. It's, it was a great opportunity to get to know each other in that time. And then we did have a couple of days. I mean, I remember very clearly one day when we went to the basement together, <laughs> um, and just sort of sat in there and worked out what we were going to be doing. That was a um, pretty chilly day, wasn't it? Quite cold in there, yeah. But, yeah, I mean, do you want to talk about anything? And the rehearsal that you found? Um, I want to say what you were saying, the clarity of thought, like um, figuring out what each thought is. One of my favourite parts about working with Will and something I'd never experienced before is that for every single scene, we would do a silent take. So um, one of the actors would be allowed to say their lines, but the other one would just have to, you know, shut up basically mm. and just kind of, I don't know, react. And it was really, really difficult and really vulnerable, but um, it really clarified a lot of things for me. Um, so yeah, I just want to say, I want to say that that was really fun, a really fun part of the filming process. And something I was a bit skeptical when Will mentioned it during the rehearsal process. So I was like, okay, it sounds like a bit of a time waster, but sure. <laughs> <laughs> and it didn't end up being a time waster because he used a lot of that. Well, and sometimes it would, re it would reveal something to you, right? Because then we sometimes do another take after the silent take where then you're like, oh, that's clarified something. Like, Let me try this in this way. It's, it's so, you know, if you get stuck in take after take after take, it sort of wipes it clean for a minute and. Um, I also feel like, you know, when you know what the lines are, you've done them so many times, and then you do a silent take, all of those thoughts are in there, and they, they, uh, they really come through. I can see it in your face. It's amazing on the screen, you know, like, you know, it's very clear for me that there is so much 
that you're processing, you can see it in operation, it's amazing. Question's generally about framing and people moving. Yeah. <laughs> I can't summarize the whole thing. This, this is, is, a, this is an excellent question, yeah, this is a great question. Yeah, and the truth is, you know, actually it's an int interesting point you make because the whole of the movie is told through Eileen's point of view, apart from that moment when we leave her and we are with Rebecca. That's really the only moment we're with Rebecca in the whole film. What, the, the only moment we're outside of Eileen's point of view. And we did that to try and create the sense of, you know, it, it, for it to feel unsettling. Absolutely, it was intentional, yeah. Beautiful, really works well. Right. <laughs> right. I'll well, tell the editor as well, Nick Emerson, who I actually have to just say, um, three people, I mean, there's a, few, a lot of people I wish were here, but like three in particular, like Nick Emerson, editor, I mean, I really think he's a, you know, he's a, done a fantastic job in this movie. Um, Richard Reed Parry, who wrote the score, I think is uh, incredible. And, um, and really my right hand, um, Ari Wegner, who just shot it so incredibly fantastic. Well, thank you all so much for being here and chatting about the film. And thank you for sharing the work with us so we could share with our audiences first. It's a huge accomplishment. Thank you, thank you. Hey, this is Eric from MyOwnCinema.com. If you want to support us, subscribe below. For more reviews, interviews, film festival coverage from Sundance, Cannes, Toronto, you want to check out these guys on this side.